Hi Vogue, it's Patrick Starr, and today I'm gonna go through my life and looks. Hi guys, it's Patrick Starr, welcome back to my channel. This is most definitely a parody of Vogue's version, My Life and Looks. I've seen different celebrities do this, I kind of wanted to do my own interpretation, so Team Star had delightfully prepared a book that I have not seen of different pictures. I don't know, the good, the bad, maybe the ugly. There should most definitely be something ooky, spooky, ugly up in here. But I thought this was so fun. And now that I have my brand, I thought this was kind of like a fun video for me to reflect on what has brought me to today in my career. And also, we are not showing all the looks here on YouTube. I am posting an IGTV video, which should be up right now, that shows other looks that are not seen in today's video. But without further ado, let's jump right into the this book and my life and looks. Okay, can I open it? Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's blank. <laughs> Surprise. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this actual event literally changed my life. This is the fourth annual NYX Face Awards. Oh my God, this outfit is my first ever custom outfit. And also this is my first ever YSL bag that I bought with Rosie McMichaels. We both went to the Beverly Center. Her and I were like, oh my gosh, should we buy a designer bag? And I just wanted a classic black on black YSL bag. And this outfit was done by my friend, Ariana Garcia uh, DeMarco. <laughs> Also, to Marco, shout out to you. I literally asked her, can I, you give me this black on black jumpsuit? And what's so funny is that um, her and I, we were arguing, she's gonna roast me right now. We were arguing about the shoes because I always wanted to look tall and I wanted to look slimmer. To me, it's all about proportions. And she was like, you have to wear a single sole. And I was like, no, I'm gonna wear my bordello uh, pleasers, like the stripper heels with the platform. And so when I was on stage, we did not really take into account the shoes so I learned a very big lesson so if you have seen it before the what they call it flooding where the hem of the length of the outfit is supposed to just graze the floor girl these were high waters with those with those bordello pleasers I felt sexy I felt confident I went for this vampy makeup look we put foundation all the way down my chest this literally changed my life this moment going from NYX to moving to LA because we got a cash prize I did not win shout out to Mikey for beating me in this competition but I got to host the show twice after that so this literally is such a crazy moment for me this is so so cool you guys are good that was a good first one. Oh my god if it ain't ball made it ain't the same <laughs> this was so funny i don't know where i i took this but this was at smashbox studios do you remember this peter and i think it was filming a tutorial there or it was at ipsy I believe I was filming some like this tutorial somewhere and I had worn this um, ASOS romper beaded romper and it reminded me of Kylie back in the day with this wig and this is so funny because this is was in front of a Range Rover when Kylie and everybody had a Range Rover and I, I never had one so I was like let me pose in front of this Range Rover and I just got my first Range Rover this year so this is so so cool to see this but me and my friend um fabian whenever we would like call for this jumpsuit we would call it the Balmain jumpsuit if it ain't Balmain, it ain't the same and we say that to this day there's no other outfit that i have that looks virtually close to this Balmain asos bit but this is so cute this is so funny and girl i was waist tuning to the gods i pulled that headlight all the way in this was giving, it's giving Kylie, 2014. <laughs> oh my gosh, not this one. This is when I started getting like custom outfits made. Um, Mac had invited me to the Amphar event. This was so, so, such a cool event. I remember Heidi Klum was there, Fergie was performing, she pulled me up on stage. But this turban, y'all, was floppity flop flop 
down to the ground and I'm so surprised that the turban is like up and I believe this is around like 2016 maybe 2017 I've always been obsessed with like a white on white moment and I just started to like fine tune and get confident in terms of wearing white because I was always wearing black before and I always challenged myself to wear more color I know I'm wearing black today but it's a you know more elevated version but this is giving custom Patrick Star the fit is all wrong yeah this was ill fit but I, I was going for something hopefully I have something I, I need something in my closet like this that actually fits that's actually high quality but this was beautiful fabric oh my god not the Cartier bracelet so oh my god funny story about this Cartier bracelet this shit is fake okay so me and Fabian were going to downtown LA oh my god let me not spook the business but there was a vendor over there that was selling fake Cartier bracelets, but this was when everybody had a Cartier bracelet. I think it was like two for 90 or like one for 50 or something like that. And I was like, Fabian, um, girl, let's just go in. Like one for you, one for me, just to see what it's like to wear a Cartier bracelet. These bracelets used to cost, I think starting out at like three, $4,000. Now minimum, I think there's six or $7,000 and it's a love bracelet. And me and Fabian were like, let's just see what it's like and what it feels like to wear Cartier. We did and I clearly wore it to an event and everyone was like, oh my God, love your bracelet, love your Cartier. And I, I don't know, I really didn't feel anything. And now I wear costume jewelry, shout out to Leia's closet. That's beautiful that's me and i think when it comes to personal style and fashion just wearing what makes you feel good whether it's designer or not santi alley or downtown is fashion you don't have to wear fashion designers to be fashion as long as you exude your personal style that's what fashion is to me and let's just turn the page <laughs> Oh my God, the chicken nugget dress. Oh my gosh, this, literally I feel like a drumstick because from far away it looks like fried chicken. But this is an original design by my dear friend, B. Kala. Love this look. It's ruffles, it's taffeta, it's like a burnt rust orange. I do have a get ready with me of this look. Um, on my channel. Love the matching turban. There's newspapers inside the turban. Um, this beautiful red jewelry. The funniest thing about this outfit that I will never forget is, I think I'm wearing flip-flops here, right? I am? Oh my God, I'm wearing flip-flops the whole time because you could not see it. And this dress actually flooded the whole floor. I'm wearing flip-flops. I got out, I see Shawn Mendes and he's like, you look fabulous. And I was like, Thank you. <laughs> That's the first thing he said to me. I was like, can you get a picture? And we, we took a picture together. This was the day that I remembered to always order a Sprinter van because my turban was getting squished. I felt like I was, you know, Houdini and the, ma the magic escaping act and how he's like handcuffed in a tank of water. That's how I felt on the hour car ride from West LA all the way to downtown LA. You guys can't really tell there's a mermaid like dress. So that means it's kind of like tight at the knees. When I told you it was tight, it was, I felt like Houdini. I felt like a twine turkey in this. But nonetheless, I felt the most sickening when I was standing up because I could actually breathe. But everything else was so incredibly fitted to my body that I could not um, bear to stay in this outfit for more than a second. But what made it possible was the flip flops. And I'm glad I wore flip flops and flats and no one could tell I was giving my real height. Love this look. Thank you, B. Cala. Thank you, American Music Awards for having me. Thank you, Shawn Mendes. And yeah, iconic moment I'll never forget. Do you remember seeing him? Yeah, I told you to take a picture of him. And then you're like, oh, I didn't know. And I said yes. Yeah. And then you, you were complaining with your superior, like, open it up while we're sitting <laughs> down at the, at the thing. You're like, please, open it up, open it up, open it up. And I was like, are you sure they're going to see your belly? <laughs> okay. Peter, where are his own commentary on the set? Oh my god, I was gonna bring this dress up. This is also a B. Kala dress. Okay, shout out to B. Kala. Love this. This was for YouTube VidCon in Anaheim, and we were just traveling nonstop. Orlando, New York, LA, New York, like back to LA for this. This was the time, right? This was so 
crazy. And they had this like beautiful bodega set up in one of the ballrooms and this rainbow dress, sickening. It showed both of my legs. It had um, these silver shoes. I was giving pride and I was a featured creator at this time. So gorgeous, glamorous, rainbow, down to a mother freaking T. And what's so crazy is that, my team is gonna hate mentioning this, we cannot find this dress. It has gone missing, it has gone MIA. I wanted to wear it again uh, for pride and we're like, let's just find it. We cannot find it anywhere. Literally, out of hundreds of dresses, I'm like, oh, it, it, it could be somewhere, squished somewhere. Do we let someone borrow it? Like, I don't remember, but RIP, this is literally such a beautiful dress. I hope to get it made again one day by Biggie Kala if he's um down, but such a beautiful outfit, rainbow pride. I'm just gonna remember the good times with it because kind of upset that she's MIA, but she's probably in a better place. But <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna turn the page. <laughs> Oh my goodness. This is when Halloween was popping, and this is the one, the only Jessica Rabbit. So glamorous. It was a mermaid sequin dress, purple gloves down. I think this went viral on Instagram, and I think it has a million views on YouTube. It's just so fun, and we filmed it in my apartment until. 6 a.m., I'm not joking. I wanted this vibe, I wanted the look. We even had this new gimbal and we were just trying to push, um, me and Peter and Fabian were just trying to push ourselves and elevate the look. But this dress is actually so stunning. A beautiful mermaid train. And this was my tiny breastplate. So I have two breastplates, if you guys can't tell, this is my, this is my first original breastplate, okay? If you are watching in the gaze, you guys know there's different sizes. I got one size too small. Okay, I'm gonna turn the page. <laughs> This one I have a love hate with because I looked absolutely ridiculous here. This is, I call this the Jetsons outfit. It is just absolutely obnoxious. I don't know what the hell I was thinking here. It's giving drag the house down boots. This is the Grammys 2018, I believe. And I had these boots that I wanted to wear that fit me and I was inspired by this bright, Color, but here's the thing with, with music awards. If you think about music awards, just like the billboards, the American Music Awards, or the Grammys, everyone is dressed so crazy. It's your time to show out. If it's something like the Oscars, the Academies, Critics' Choice, um, Golden Globes, Emmys, it's very actor centric, TV personality centric. And if you think about the types of individuals, they're very more modest in their style. But when you think of like musicians and award shows and like Lizzo and Lady Gaga, like all these musicians wanna show their personal style through and through because they're showing their music and who they are as an artist. And I think that's so cool. And I kind of, it clicks for me around this time to just like wear whatever the hell you want, be loud, be crazy. But this was just very, very crazy. I wanted to show my legs. I wanted it to be two tones. I wanted it to be crazy. We had this applique like on the front. Glam Tech Steven T did my makeup, wore this AB jewelry. I just wanted to be obnoxious. I wanted to wear rhinestones. I wanted to wear just obnoxious and that I did. And I remember being in the slow-mo cam and it being so ridiculous and crazy. It was very, very fierce and very fun to do this. And this is the day before I shot my fifth MAC collection campaign. So I literally had a set of pink nails and then we flipped and then I did red nails with my um, dear friend Mindy, who I absolutely adore and love. And that was like such a crazy moment to be at the Grammys and then to shoot my fifth and final collection with MAC around this era. So that was really, really fun. <gasps> This was done by my friend um, Alex, who is known for making couture corsets. And he did this beautiful gold number for me. Absolutely love. Um, this was at the Billboard Music Awards. Both my brothers came with me, Peter and Paul. This was giving very Belle, but make a hoochie mama. Um, this was actually a long outfit, but it was a little bit heavy for what I like. The sleeves were very long, the tail was very long, and I was like, how do we make it more Patrick? And so we had then bustled everything to give it this short, um, 
Diva S number and there's a built-in corset, which I absolutely love in, in this. And I remember the funny part about this was it was me, Ronnie, my makeup artist who did um, helped me get glam. We had a driver named Dawn and I remember Dawn was driving us and we went out to Piranha, the nightclub in Las Vegas. She drove us there and I wore exactly this outfit and she was like, you know what? It ain't safe on these streets. And then we're like, oh no, no, we've been here to Piranha. Like it's okay. And imagine Imagine this big Mercedes Sprinter van and me, my two brothers and Ronnie just hopping out and hopping in. Next thing you know, she's like, I just want to make sure y'all are okay. She had a pistol on her. <laughs> we were like, what, Dawn? Like, you roll like that? I remember Ronnie and me were just going crazy. Like, oh my God, we had a driver and we got security. That was like such a fun um, night in Vegas for the three of us, um, my brothers, and also with Ronnie, that this moment was really, really cool. Wow! Uh, this is the streamies. This picture gets me so emotional because this was a moment and, uh, and literally a transition moment from leaving negativity in my life. And I actually did not want to be here at this award show. I was fighting like you know like like a kid that needs a nap like crying i literally from the car ride all the way to the venue i was ready to turn around in the car i did not want to be there there were people that i didn't want to see i was just like so upset and hurt but when they called my name i was it was so surreal i remember we fixed my turban right before sitting down and we tied it so freaking tight it was just beautiful um heavy duty i don't know if it's taffeta or satin fabric and we bronzed my legs and i remember peter helped me up and i remember before winning um peter was like oh my god it's you it's you it's you you're gonna win you're gonna win you're gonna win and i was like no, shut the fuck up, little brother. Like, I don't wanna, like, I don't wanna deal with this. And he was like, no, you're gonna win, you're gonna win, you're gonna win. And the winner is Patrick Starr. And I was like, so shocked. Like, a, a warmth came over me and this energy came over me. And I really feel like life was telling me to continue to do what I'm doing because at this point, it, it was very hard for me to continue. And yeah, this literally changed my life. Iconic. <laughs> <gasps> This is so cool to see this. This is Patrick Starr and the DuPont twins walking as uh, Ursula and Flotsam and Jetsam for the blondes and Disney. Quick note, Lil' Kim wore this as well. And I think it's so iconic that she wore this um, after me. And this was like a custom design. I remember um, David and Philippe giving me a runway lesson at the studio. And, but before that, I remember seeing, I believe, Todrick Hall or the Blondes post their invitation um, on social media. And it said, Disney and the Blondes. And I was like, wow, that is such an amazing collaboration. Because if you don't know the blondes the blondes have the most beautiful over-the-top rhinestone shiny crazy silhouettes corsets uh, just glamorous and outlandish it's just so beautiful and fabulous i remember going wow that's so crazy and then i believe the day after i saw the invitation on social media my publicist alexandra duff she um called me she's like hey um, crazy, they have been trying to message you. And I'm like, who? They're like the blondes, but check their personal accounts. So David and Philippe were messaging me from their personal accounts and not the, the, the fashion brand account. I remember reading it and them asking if I would walk in their Disney and Blondes collaboration fashion show and open up as Ursula. And that was just mind blowing to me. For me to be an overweight Filipino, bald, walking at Fashion Week at one of the most iconic shows in New York City. This was a moment. This was crazy. I remember Paris Hilton back there being like, that's hot, so good, you're killing it. Also my shoe broke the night before, so this was really, really insane that this had came to be. And I remember after the show, bumping into Lizzo outside of the studio it was so cool. We did some pictures and gifts together, but this was a really surreal, beautiful, iconic 
moment for me in fashion. Really, really, really special. Not just the blondes, but also with Disney. A huge fan of both brands to a T. Love that. <gasps> What in the Dr. Seuss is going on? Oh, do you got y'all see the same boots from the Grammys? I want it to be pink, realness. Oh my gosh, T. This is the same boots, the same shorts, the same belt, and the same necklace, and probably the same exact freaking turban that I wore at the Grammys. This jacket, I had no bra, no top, holding it together, the house down. And I remember there's three hook and eyes in the back. This was in Toronto, Canada for my second MAC collection. And I wanted, again, an obnoxious fur number. So I remember uh, looking at this fabric in downtown LA. That's the thing. I go to downtown LA, I look at fabric that I wanna wear. I have someone that I love and know make my image and my head come to life and make it for me. But something about the process of picking the fabrics, touching them and envisioning a look, sketching it out, this is what it was. And what's so funny is that this jacket was actually very, very, very short. I was like, no, this isn't giving the drama that I want. So I, we added it to be floor length and it was dragging and it was just a statement. And I remember uh, standing on top of the mat counter with with my face um, in the back, and uh, that image in the back was shot by Brandon Lundby. Clock the outfit repeater. That is T right there. Same boot, shorts, belt, necklace, and turban. Probably the same makeup and lashes too, to be quite fair. <gasps> Ooh, this look is traumatizing, y'all. This was in Mexico City, again, with my second collection. This outfit was giving toddlers and tiaras realness. A lot of my outfits are, give very toddlers and tiaras because of just my my size. I have a really big midsection, so I love creating skirts that like really make it really, really big or big arms, so I just look smaller. Two things. There's a picture of me that I had saw someone tag me in, and it was a group picture with all of the MAC artists um, in this mall in Mexico City, and I'm squatting, and I look really, really, really like cartoon short. It looks like it's my body and then feet. It's so funny because all my legs were hidden under this skirt. And on top of that, I think because I had too many chips and salsa the night before, I think my outfit in the back had busted open. I remember Fabian having to cut out a long panel and literally sew it or glue it or Velcro it so there was like a panel because it just busted open and it was just skin. So we had to do that, we had to rig it, we had to pin it. And what's even funnier is that because there was so many safety pins in the back, I remember at this meet and greet, people were hugging me and hugging me and hugging me. One of the pins in my back came undone and whenever they would hug me, the pin would just stab me and stab me and stab me and stab me. And I would be like, thank you, thank you, thank you. Like, <laughs> like I love you too, it was just like so. Te amo, te amo. Like it was just so crazy because we we're in Mexico City. I'm speaking kind of Spanglish. And on top of that, my dress busted wide open. There's a pin sticking me in my third back row. And it was just a funny, crazy bit and a moment to remember. Um, this was such a fun moment. And, and my dad and, um, and my brother Peter went with me to Mexico City. So this was really, really cool. <gasps> oh, wow. This dress is the convertible of convertible dresses because I have a full-on bodysuit under here. Oh my god, this is so crazy because in the beginning I had showed um, me being an applicant in the Face Awards and this was me as a host of the Face Awards. So this is kind of cool that that picture is kind of in the mix here um, from when I was an actual contestant to now being uh, the host of the show. And I was like, I just want to go all out. I want to go big. I want to go crazy. So like the gold number from the American Influencer Awards, I wanted to, this to be super shiny, captivating on stage. What are these gloves that I'm wearing? Um, it was just it was just a moment. It was a look. And I remember I performed with Alyssa Edwards and I came out in a jumpsuit version, a skin tight bodysuit. And by the time Alyssa was done performing, I had my team ready with the skirt, ready to hoist up on my waist and strap. And by the time I walked down, out. Everyone was screaming because this was just the gown version. So underneath all of this, I was wearing the bodysuit and we just slipped the skirt on and the skirt shape is so futuristic and that's why I call it a convertible.
convertible because it went from jumpsuit to then gown and like I think four minutes. We were able to strap it in and hoist it, make sure my shoes were on and tight. And it was just a, a, a crazy moment. And this was just large and in charge and a surreal moment for me. And I love something practical, okay? You get a two for one. You get two outfits in one, call it a day. I think we need to do one of these again <laughs> in a different color. Love this. <gasps> and oh, oh my gosh. So this was the second. Um, face Awards that I hosted, and this was from the first Face Awards that I hosted. And this too was a reveal moment um, from the single Bitch I'm Everything that Joella Puss had produced. I was very inspired by Violet Tchotchke's fall to winter transition from her season on Drag Race. I was like, I kind of want my own. So this was done with such large kimono looking sleeves that when I folded it in, and it was white, and it was lined white on the inside, and it wasn't intended to be like that, but we just made it like that and we had a second belt attached it. So when I performed um, on stage, we just opened this. But this was just really, really fun and, and I'm obsessed with this look. Literally, I hope we still have it. I hope we didn't lose it. Um, we do, okay, we do. <laughs> it's in the archives. Oh my gosh, this is another B Cala original. I don't know what I was doing at this time, but when I got this outfit, but I remember um, having ordered um, a few outfits from B. Cala, who does custom, beautiful, over-the-top outfits. This is again in this beautiful orange rust taffeta with this um, boas. I had nowhere to wear it. When I tell you I had nowhere to wear this outfit, it was just sitting in my closet and I was like, girl, when are we ever gonna wear this? And I remember I got invited to the world premiere in uh, the Dolby Theater of Aladdin. I remember seeing the colors of the movie and the invitation and I go, this, because the color is literally the same color as the Aladdin logo and the pink and the flowers that were there on the carpet was just so amazing. And I had to wear it with purple shoes. And it was just like such an obnoxious outfit. I was just so delighted to be there. But T, I didn't watch the movie. <laughs> so because I had to go to Kylie's skin event and my friend had a collaboration event. So I literally went from Aladdin to my friend's event. And then I went to Kylie's skin all in the same day. And if you guys haven't checked it out, there's a vlog on my YouTube channel of me doing it in the bus, me changing and going and changing and going. And this was literally the 12th day after having removed my tonsils. So I was like quarantined and down because um, I had my tonsils removed. And then this was the very first day out and about to three events back to back. I said, let's just go for it because I've been resting too long, excited to be here, milking it, working it. And to be at a Disney premiere, to work with Disney period or be seen by Disney period, is like a dream come true. So love this moment for me. <gasps> ah! Speaking of Kylie's skin, this was that same day. Can you guys believe literally from this day or this moment, this is literally like 4.50, five o'clock. This is like eight, nine o'clock at night. Oh my God, this was so crazy. Again, you see the bow on the shoulder, simple silhouette. They said, wear pink. And I was like, oh my gosh, I don't have anything pink. So I had uh, this outfit made. Um, this top right here, I call this the Chloe top. And it's so funny because Chloe Kardashian always wears bodysuits. So every time I'm like, oh, let's get a Chloe top. Let's throw a bow on the side and a full circle pink skirt. That was it. I had this jewelry um, made from Malaya's closet and this like white pearl and platinum, which was just so complimentary. And I remember Kris Jenner loving it. And I also saw Caitlyn. Kim was there, Kylie was there. I think all the girls were there. It was just so epic. Courtney and Chloe, they were all there. I think it was so cool to be with Kylie V, Kylie Jenner. And I think we look so cute together. Love that. <gasps> What a Disney day. This is the premiere of Toy Story 4. This, again, something bright, shiny, Patrick Star sequin. I felt so freaking cute in this. I felt so skinny in this. I love showing leg, I love showing chest. This was it, and it was also comfortable to sit in. This, this skirt is very, very, very short. Oh my God, with the same shoe again. I have worn this shoe 
this gold metallic shoe nonstop. We need to tell my stylist Carla to make me another damn shoe because this is not okay. Oh, wow. This is the 2019 Streamy Awards. And this was an obnoxious moment for me. I just love, I think just looking at everything, I just love dressing obnoxious and loud. It doesn't have to be pretty because it's, it's like it's like somewhat pretty, but just like with an edge. And I call this my Hot Wheels dress. So this was done by the amazing B. Calla in this beautiful blue velvet and with this beautiful, what looks like plastic vinyl flames going up all the way up the turban. And it was just so freaking cool. Cause also this year, as you guys can see, my eye makeup is red, my lip is red, and so is my jewelry. I was also um, performing cause I was one of the, the hosts and performers at the Streamy Awards and I was performing a Christmas number. It was just a fun award show. And on top of everything, wearing this obnoxious, crazy outfit, I won the award for fashion. So again, just going back to like owning who you are in terms of what you want. Uh, to wear and how you want to express yourself, I think is the true definition of fashion, is, is self-expression and it's in, in the fullest. So this is so, so cool. Hot Wheels, come on Hot Wheels. I need to wear this again. It's maybe a kid's party. <laughs> oh my gosh, wow. Definitely copied me. Des did not include that in. <laughs> <laughs> I know you would get a kick out of that. <laughs> this outfit is so iconic. This is from my ultimate shoot shot by Sarah Silver. Sarah Silver, I've been such a fan of, photographer. I remember seeing her on Top Model, uh, shooting the Top Model. So I was like, oh my God, Sarah Silver. And then when she shot this, I was like, oh my God, I remember you on Top Model. And that was like such a surreal moment. And we had this beautiful tulle gown that represented airiness, fluffiness, and over the top real with one size because this was my ultimate powder photo shoot for one size beauty and I said you know what if we're launching the ultimate setting powder what is our version of the ultimate dress and this is what we came up with there was this beautiful grand like tool uh, jacket that went over it. It also had sleeves that could fall off the shoulders. We wanted the silhouette to be curvy because I never really do um, this silhouette that often because it's not that comfortable for me. That's why you see waist and then skirt. We don't really see that mermaid because here I'm wearing like my pads, but this was just fluffy, fierce, over the top bringing us the ultimate dress by one size. Launching a, a brand during a pandemic is just crazy. To be established in 2020 is just crazy. To have shot this and there was multiple studios going on was just insane and crazy, but uh, you can't really tell by my face here because I was just living my best life in this fantasy photo shoot by Sarah Silver and One Size Beauty with the ultimate dress. Oh my gosh, this is the shot from my recent campaign with Fashion to Figure. This outfit is just iconically me. I had these jeans in my brain about something rhinestone every day that you could wear with anything. And we came up with this beautiful rhinestone jeans with this beautiful sparkly trim. And again, this is the top that was inspired by my American Music Awards gold outfit, but it's just, fun, it's bright. The other pieces that you could see on the side are also um, pieces from my Fashion to Figure collection. Love it, this collection is called Life's a Party and that's just what I wanted to do was to celebrate life through fashion, individuality, self-expression and confidence. And I'm so happy that Fashion to Figure was able to give me free reign to express myself, to create pieces for their consumers and also my viewers too. That's ultimately me. And not, not to mention too, I've been making and designing a lot of my clothes for years as you guys have seen and heard. I literally go downtown, look at fabric, touch, play, feel the fabric, be inspired by it and come up with a sketch and an outfit made for me. Never in my wildest dreams that I ever thought that someone would want my fashion or want a piece of an outfit and I, always get DMs like, oh my God, where can I get that? Where did you get that? And I'm like, baby girl, like, 
I had it made, but there's nothing I could do up until this moment with fashion to figures. So if you guys wanna check out the collection, be sure to check it out at ftf.com and shop Life's a Party by Patrick Starr. So cool and epic. Mwah. All right, everyone, that is my life and looks. Be sure to check out the video on IGTV on my Instagram at Patrick Star to see all the other amazing outfits and hear all the amazing stories that I have about the outfits at those times that I did not get to show you guys in today's video. That is so, so crazy. We did a lot of looks today, but I wanna say thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to Vogue for inspiring me in today's video. If you guys wanna see more fashion looks and story times like this, be sure to comment down below. Please give this video a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe. And don't forget, fashion, confidence, and beauty, and makeup is a one-size-fits-all. I'll see y'all later. Bye.